The BMW 3 Series has always been the benchmark that all other compact luxury sedans compete against. It's the yardstick. But how good is that yardstick when it becomes a plug-in hybrid? Well, let's go for a drive and find out. So what's under the hood of this BMW 330e xDrive? Well, it's a 2.0-liter turbocharged engine, which has some assist from an electric motor. Total system output is 288 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. But that's only half the story. You see, most of the time, this engine only produces 248 horsepower. To get the full 288, you have to be in something called extra boost which gives you an additional 40 horsepower, but only up to 10 seconds at a time. So most of the time, it's not running on its full potential. So what does that mean once you're out on the road? Well, you still get that instant torque from the electric motor as soon as you put your foot down and you feel it accelerating, but zero to 100 kilometers an hour with this X-Drive system takes six seconds, which is about almost half a second slower than the 330XI. Before looking at the spec sheet, you would think that this would be faster because it has more power and more torque than the 330XI. But because of the added weight of the 12 kilowatt hour battery, this weighs about 450 pounds more than the 330XI. 450 pounds, that's like two of me sitting in the back the entire time. When do you think he's coming back? But of course, the big benefit to having a hybrid powertrain is much better fuel economy. Currently, I am averaging about 1.3 liters per hundred kilometers. Yeah, you heard me right. 1.3 liters per hundred kilometers. And that's over roughly 200, 230 kilometers of driving. Of course, I have been plugging it in as much as possible, which is why that fuel economy figure is so low. The 12 kilowatt hour battery holds enough charge for a claimed range of 32 kilometers. It doesn't seem like much, but most commutes are around the 30 kilometer mark from the suburb to the city center. With regen braking, smooth throttle inputs, and no climate control, I actually managed to increase the range to around 40 kilometers. But to accommodate that battery, BMW's engineers have had to reduce the size of the fuel tank. In this 330e, it's 20 liters or about 5 gallons smaller than the non-hybrid version of the 3 Series. So as a result, the overall range is only around 400 kilometers or 250 miles. As for charging the car, a level 2 charger takes 2-3 to three hours, and from a regular 120 volt wall socket, it's approximately 9-10 to 10 hours from flat to 100%. By default, the car is going to be in hybrid mode. Most of the time, it'll just drive on electricity up until about 100, 110 kilometers an hour, and then it'll switch over to gasoline. Or if you really put your foot down, then it'll switch over to the gasoline engine. Then there is electric mode, where it drives purely on electricity, and the top speed that it can go on electricity alone is bumped up to 140 kilometers an hour. It also has a slightly stronger regen braking, at least that's what it feels like to me every time I lift off the accelerator pedal. It's not exactly one pedal driving because at the very end, like right before you have to stop, you still need to use the brakes in order to actually stop. But just by modulating the accelerator pedal, you can actually regain quite a bit of electricity back into the battery and you slow down decently enough. However, my problem with the regen braking is that 
Yes, it works well, but there's a little bit of a disconnect between when the regen braking gets down to slower speeds where it's not as powerful and when the brake discs take over. It feels like there just isn't really anything there in between the two. So then you push harder on the brake pedal and as you come to a stop, you have that slight jerking motion as you come to a complete stop. There is also battery control mode. And in this mode, you can set to how much you want the battery to get recharged by the gas engine. Right now it's at 70%, but you can change it from 30% all the way up to 100%. Be aware though, this does use up a lot of gas. When it's recharging the battery, the engine consumes as much as 14 liters per hundred kilometers, 15 liters per hundred kilometers. It is better when you're doing it on a highway, but still, that's quite a lot. Now, the biggest characteristic of a 3 Series is the way that it handles. And with the added weight of the batteries, um, this doesn't feel that well. You really feel the extra weight whenever you turn into a corner. It feels like it just wants to push outwards. The steering is responsive, which is good, but it doesn't really feel all that engaging. I can switch it to sport mode and it becomes firmer, but it just still doesn't feel the same as a gasoline version of the 3 Series. It's the weight of these batteries that just doesn't make this 330E as engaging to drive as a 330i, and that's a real disappointment. The 2021 BMW 330e is available with Adaptive M suspension. However, the tuning feels a bit softer than other non-hybrid variants of the 3 Series. The benefit there is that this 3 Series is more forgiving when driving over potholes and poorly maintained roads. It doesn't feel floaty either, but instead it provides an excellent and comfortable ride for daily commuting. Furthermore, it's a quiet place to be in with little in the way of wind or road noise when driving at highway speeds. When the engine does need to turn on, it is a smooth transition and the engine itself is quiet at normal operating RPM ranges. Inside the BMW 330e, it's business as usual. It looks almost exactly the same as every other 3 Series out there. Same infotainment system, same digital display, same steering wheel with paddle shifters, same climate controls which are very easy to use and understand. There's a few media buttons underneath that. This particular demo does have wireless charging as well as a couple of cup holders which will easily fit a small McDonald's coffee. There's also a few buttons here on the center console to control the infotainment system unless you don't want to use the touchscreen that is. The only difference between this and all the other 3 series are the drive mode buttons. There is a sport button as there would be in a BMW but this one controls between standard, individual and extra boost. There's a hybrid, electric, and adaptive buttons as well, and a battery control button, which you don't get on obviously non-hybrid versions of the 3 Series. As for interior space, up here in the front, plenty of it for my 6 foot 4 stature. Headroom is obviously very plentiful, legroom is also very good, and it's a very good seating position. So it's pedals are nice and straight right in front of me. Steering wheel is right in front of me and I have good visibility all around. In the back though, it's a different story. This of course being a compact sedan, there isn't a whole lot of space in the back. Seat is in my driving position and oh yeah, legroom is pretty much non-existent. Headroom is also really tight, hair is brushing up against the headliner. Yeah, I really don't want to be here for very long, probably 15 minutes tops before I start annoying the driver to put his foot down and get to our destination much faster. Ow, 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 oh. As for trunk space, predictably it's less than what you'd get in the non-hybrid versions of the 3 Series. Compared to the 330i, this 330e has a whopping 104 liters 
that's 3.7 cubic feet of less cargo volume. Total trunk space is 373 liters or 13.2 cubic feet. The rear wheel drive version of the 2021 BMW 330e starts at just under $45,000 Canadian. However, if you want it with X drive, be prepared to pay a hefty $9,000 Canadian premium. That is if you live in Canada. In the United States, the upgrade for X drive is only $2,000 American. Not sure why it's so much more expensive here in Canada, but say la vie. For the money though, you do get a slew of features that one would expect from a luxury compact sedan. Heated seats, sunroof, forward collision alert with automatic emergency braking, front and rear parking sensors, backup camera, LED headlights, automatic climate control and leatherette seating upholstery are some of the examples of standard features. Of course, these standard features differ between the Canadian market and the American market. So does the BMW 3 Series work as a plug-in hybrid? Well, first let's cover this badge and just look at the car itself. Because as a plug-in hybrid, this car is actually pretty good. It's very comfortable, it's fuel efficient, especially if you just use it around town and continuously recharge it. And if you get it with just rear wheel drive, then it's actually pretty decently priced for a luxury compact sedan. But because it's a BMW and a 3 Series, it's supposed to be a bit more sporty to drive and a bit more engaging. Unfortunately, because of all the weight of the battery, it just doesn't feel that way. I would much rather have a 330i than a 330e if I was looking for a sporty and engaging driving luxury sedan. So this just doesn't really work as a BMW. What do you think? Do you agree? Or do you think I'm talking nonsense? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you want to know more about this BMW 330e xDrive, I wrote a more detailed review of it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or probably a plug-in hybrid SUV. Who knows? Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.